Hi there, my name is Emma. I'm an artist and DIYer. Welcome to my channel. I recently made these adorable velvet mushrooms, actually for a brand campaign, and they turned out so cute that I had to make a longer video to make sure that you guys got all of the information, everything you need to know on how to make them. They're absolutely adorable, probably my favorite thing I've ever made. They were super, super easy to do. I definitely think this is a beginner friendly tutorial. You don't have to be a crafting expert or have a ton of supplies to do this. You just need some fabric, some styrofoam, pins, and pop paint. That's pretty much it. I guess scissors and some paint. A few things. <laughs> I'll link everything below if I can find the links to everything. But again, this is definitely a beginner friendly tutorial. You could style these mushrooms with plants. You could put them in a nursery. I actually already posted this on TikTok and Instagram and someone commented that they're having like a woodland themed wedding and they're gonna make some of these. So they're totally versatile. I think they're super, super in right now. Again, easy to make. You don't have to use the exact fabric I'm doing either, which is kind of nice. I actually had two people, as I said, do this and they use different fabrics. You don't have to use velvet or get new fabric for this. I made two different sizes. One was around 10 inches and one was maybe five inches, but you can use whatever size styrofoam you can find. Obviously you don't have to use styrofoam. I had a lot of people comment about upcycling possibilities. I've always thought of using a bowl from the thrift store. However, the only problem with that is it has a flat top and if you're using plastic, you can't mold the shape. So styrofoam really is the ideal material, but if you have something in mind, paper mache, whatever it may be, that's a little bit more eco-friendly, I welcome and invite you to use that. However, I know I'll be keeping these for a while and I feel comfortable with using styrofoam. There are a ton of ways you can do this and at the end, I'll give some more alternatives or ideas that I've thought of and actually some people have commented slash done that I think could make this even better. But I love how mine turned out and here's how I did it. First, you're gonna start off with your styrofoam. I used this around 10 inch circle and then a 12 inch tall cone. And then you're gonna use a serrated knife. This is just my kitchen knife and cut off the edges the bottom edges of this half circle. And you can see I'm kind of doing two layers of cuts, one to get that main part, and then as I'm doing right here, to really make it nice and rounded. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we have handy dandy sandpaper. I also cut the bottom of my cone. I did the same technique, kind of two layers of cuts to give it a nice rounded bottom and then really relied on my sandpaper for this one because my cuts were not so pretty, but this is what's gonna give it that really nice mushroomy shape. I then took my knife and carved a hole in the middle of that. I would make yours a little bit bigger than I made mine. I got around 19 inches of this fabric and I got 16 inches of a yellow fabric that you'll see on the smaller mushroom. I folded it four times and then I cut off that edge where there isn't a fold mark to kind of make it a little bit more rounded. Then I just used these pins. This was so simple and I started bringing my fabric into the center. I did four parts first two right across from each other and then I did the two other sides just shoving my pin in there and I was amazed at how well it stayed. You might need a little bit of adjusting but for the most part because it's so stretchy it's really really easy to manage so I was just pulling it up and pinning it in and as I said I should have done my circle initially way bigger because this ended up being pretty full of fabric so it's kind of hard to stick my base in there but uh, still the the actual wrapping itself was very very easy and you can adjust afterwards then i grabbed some puff paint this one's by tulip and started making little dots i would recommend kind of trying to focus on clumps of three or four uh, because that's kind of a natural pattern of these mushrooms i started off with my biggest ones right around the crown and then it's just really important to remind yourself to do clumps because it's super easy to just naturally do like polka dots really evenly far apart but these mushrooms you'll kind of find that these details are actually kind of clumped and make sure once you're done with this you set it aside and give it ample time to dry unlike me who tried to shove it on after this and i totally messed it up so 
don't be me. Then I took this cotton fabric and I placed my cone in the middle and just kind of rolled it around. This is gonna give me the appropriate shape that I'll need to fold around it. And as you can see, I did it like an inch or two below just to give myself some extra fabric. I'll cut it off later, but you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. I pinned it on so I could kind of see where my excess was. And then again, I left some extra fabric that I'm just overlapping. Now, if you want to do this nicer, you could glue it, but I just pinned it and put that side towards the back. This part I ended up redoing because you can see it's a lot of fabric and it did make it a little bit topsy-turvy. So <laughs> I went back and cut off a little bit of that fabric and then pinned it in again so it would be so wobbly and then I kind of smashed the bottom down to make sure those pins were in there and then I took more of that fabric and measured down maybe three or four inches maybe five inches and cut a strip this strip was I would say two feet and I frayed the edges because I feel like the edges of these ruffles are normally a little frayed. I took some yellow paint and I am always starting on the bottom of this and flicking up. That's what's gonna create the best, most light, fluffy shape is to always start on the bottom and flick your brush up so it's most concentrated on the bottom and less at the top. And then I also went back in with some brown and I'm doing that exact same thing on the actual cone itself. I ended up going pretty high with this yellow color and then the brown, just like on the ruffles, is less. So it's really high with the yellow and just a little bit with the brown and I'm still always flicking up. Then this was my favorite part. You are going to fold the ruffles and pin them in. I don't know if you can tell, I'm doing it at a diagonal because these pins are long enough to where they would go through to the other side if you pinned it straight. So I'm pinning them down at a diagonal. I did about three ruffles per pin and I ended up using maybe around six pins for the whole thing. And for the end, I just kind of overlapped them and pinned it. I left all these pins in there and shoved this into the top circle. You can kind of adjust it, play with it. That's what's nice about working with fabric. And I love how they turned out. I think they are so stinking cute. I think these might be the cutest things I've ever made, but there's always room for improvement. Let's talk about how to make these a little bit more stable and a little bit more over the top. First off, they are a little bit wobbly. They're very, very light because they're styrofoam. You could do a few things to combat this. One of the people that made it was actually my friend Jasmine from Instagram. She made these super cute earrings. She's a super talented artist. And of course her mushrooms turned out like way better than mine. I'll show a photo, but she actually made a stand and covered it in moss with a wood slab. I think that's an amazing idea. Someone else commented on TikTok that you could glue a coaster to the bottom to weigh it down. Uh, I don't have cats or anything that would knock these over while they're sitting there. I made these about a month ago and they're just sitting there. <laughs> they haven't been knocked over, but if you're making them for a nursery, a wedding, anything like that, you might want to stabilize them a little bit. So adding extra precautions is never a bad idea. You can attach them to a base or weigh them down. You could also use museum wax, which I technically have never used before, although I recommend it all the time, but it's this wax that you put at the bottom of things to make it a little bit more stable. So you could definitely look into that as well. And I'll try to link some below. Also, I just shoved the top part on to the cone, which I know I didn't show. I totally forgot to show that step, but I just put it on top of the cone. Uh, if you want to make it more stable, you can definitely glue it. I highly recommend that. Or you can put a dowel or a skewer through part of the cone and then part of the top part. So it's all kind of in one piece, or you could do a combination of those two to make sure like if you hit it over, they don't fall off. I was also initially planning on and thinking about using stick on pearls to make those little white details or you could even use the pins that I was using, which kind of looked like pearls, and use those to create those details. The only downside of that is they're not different sizes, but I think they're stick-on pearls that come in different sizes. If I can find some, <laughs> I'll link them below, but I think that would be so cute and that would really elevate it, especially if you are doing it for a wedding or something where you wanna be really extra with it. I was also thinking you could add rhinestones to look like dewdrops, or you could do a combination of puff paint, pearls, rhinestones, or just pearls and rhinestones, again, to make it a little bit more elevated and glamorous. 
There are so many options that you can do with this, whether it's size, fabric, or the little detailing. I always have my goal to be yours better than mine when I make my YouTube. So I always try to create as many variations or think of as many variations as possible afterwards. And thankfully I posted this on TikTok and Instagram. So I had awesome followers who gave me more ideas, which is always ideal because again, I want you guys to make the best thing possible. I always make my things knowing that yours will be better because I try to think of all the things that went wrong, could go wrong, or could be better about it. So hope you see that, I hope you appreciate it. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, like literally like this video, follow me on TikTok, Instagram, all of that stuff. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and happy making.